Uh, all right. Uh, thanks, Ayan and uh, Suresh, uh, for the invitation to speak on your uh, uh, talk channel. Uh, so, um, I, I promised uh, Ayan uh, two things. Uh, firstly, I said that I'll do it sort of more like in a blackboard style, uh, but this is the first time for me doing that. So, if there are any glitches or if things don't, uh, this thing, I apologize in advance. Uh, uh, se uh, se uh, secondly, um, uh, this is uh, th this, I promise to give a sort of a high level. Uh, overview of uh, some of the work uh, uh, that I have been uh, uh, recently doing. Uh, so it will be uh, largely based on uh, uh, these papers. Oh, sorry, I think my screen seems to have frozen. Uh, uh, one minute. Um, the screen sharing some... Uh, no, it's working, Rajesh. It is, oh, okay. uh, yeah. so somehow on my screen, when I see it, I couldn't... Uh, this thing. So did you see the pointer when I circled things? Yes, the pointer moved, yes. Uh, okay, so uh, anyway, there's something... Uh, somehow I can't see it, which is not a great thing, but <laughs> uh, uh, that, that's... Uh, yeah, the pointer is moving now, yes. <laughs> uh, the This thing, uh, this is... Uh, uh, no, um, uh, yeah, like, like right now, I made a line. You could see that. No. Oh, okay. So yeah, no, I think uh, I'm changing. Just uh, stop the screen share and start again. Maybe. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, this thing uh, stop the share and start again. It might have frozen uh, for some reason. Okay, so, okay, uh, did that work? That worked, a circle. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, the, the, so I will give a sort of a high level overview of uh, some of the, uh, the works I have been uh, doing, uh, which is essentially uh, uh, on a particular example of the ADS uh, CFT correspondence, in particular ADS 3 CFT 2, um, where uh, we can directly exhibit the equivalence uh, of a large part of the dictionary between the string theory uh, on one side and the space-time CFT on the other. Uh, so this is the, an equivalence of correlators that I will uh, uh, describe to you. Uh, but along the way, I will try to also indicate how these begin to realize some ideas on obtaining the string theory from Feynman diagrams of field theory, uh, of the dual field theory, sort of a real, uh, as a realization of open closed string duality. Uh, some of the technical details and other things, especially in this uh, second uh, paper, I, I will uh, talk about more at the conference. Uh, so I, I will try to make it sort of uh, complementary to what I will be talking about over there. So um, the... Uh, Outline of the talk is roughly as follows. Uh, I'll first describe the particular example of the ADS3 CFT2 duality that, uh, uh, that we will be focusing on. This will be something in the tensionless limit uh, of the uh, dual string theory. Uh, uh, so then I will uh, say a little bit more about this matching of the uh, uh, the uh, correlators. In particular, I'll start and spend, I guess, a good amount of the time here uh, uh, talking about the space-time CFT to at least uh, uh, explain in some uh, uh, some uh, uh, at a sort of again a broad brush level, but uh, what the how you compute correlators in symmetric orbifold uh, um, uh, CFT. Uh, and then uh, we will try to relate it to the dual world sheet CFT of the ADS3 string theory, uh, where again, we'll have a set of correlators and we'll, I will try to emphasize the important property of this localization of the correlators on the modelized space, uh, the world sheet modelized space. Uh, which is essential for uh, these two things to sort of uh, uh, 
uh, to match. And, uh, and then finally, I'll sort of uh, say what it uh, sort of uh, means for ADS CFT, uh, deriving it in, in general. So please stop me whenever, uh, whenever you uh, uh, have any questions, and this is uh, somewhat informal, uh, um, so I'll be happy to take questions anytime. Uh, so, okay, so the first uh, thing I wanted to mention is to lay out the particular example where we will be uh, looking at the ADS3 CFT2 duality. Uh, for, so let me make um, the following claim, which uh, uh, is that string theory on the uh, supersymmetric background ADS3 times S3 times T4 uh, with one unit of uh, so-called NSNS flux, uh, a three-form flux through the ADS3, uh, this, by the way, is the sort of minimal flux. It's the smallest amount of flux uh, that one can have. Uh, and or uh, equivalently, this is the small radius uh, limit or the tensionless limit, uh, if you wish, uh, because there is uh, only one scale in the theory, which is the radius of ADS in sort of string units. And when that's small, that's effectively like taking the string tension to zero. Uh, so the claim is that the string theory on this background um, is actually very special. Uh, uh, and this is with NSNS flux. I mentioned that because you can have uh, these string theories with Ramon Ramon three form flux or in general, some admixture of uh, both Neva Schwartz and Ramon Ramon flux, but we will focus on the pure NSNS flux case. Uh, and uh, the claim is that this is dual to a uh, two dimensional CFT, uh, which is the so called symmetric or befold CFT. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, something which involves. Uh, taking this T4 and N copies of it uh, over here and uh, uh, or befolding by the symmetric group on N elements, which permutes these N copies uh, and you do it uh, like a conventional 2D CFT or befolding. Uh, and uh, this is the Nth symmetric uh, product or befold and the claim is um, that string theory, at least perturbative string theory on this is dual to this uh, as, oops, um, uh, as n goes to infinity. Uh, so roughly speaking, the dual string coupling g string square is like one by n. Uh, uh, so um, the uh, uh, string theory uh, there has a perturbative expansion when n is uh, very large. So this is the claim and this is the, uh, so this will be the sort of uh, setting for uh, everything that I have uh, uh, to say. And uh, now let me say a little bit more about uh, the left hand side of this uh, uh, duality, uh, since that's perhaps the more unfamiliar thing to many people. And the right hand side is a two dimensional safety and I'll say a little bit about that later, but uh, uh, okay. So the left hand side, the LHS uh, is uh, usually, uh, um, is usually defined in terms of uh, Sigma model. Um, uh, uh, and that sigma model is based on an SL2R level K plus two Bezomino Witten theory when you have K units of NSNS flux uh, times SU2 at level K minus two and times uh, T4. Uh, T4 is just four free bosons and they're uh, supersymmetric fermionic partners. Uh, um, so this is usually defined in terms of this sigma model uh, in the NSR formalism. Uh, so 
so the um, uh, so this k, as I said, is the number of units of NSNS -NS flux. Um, so, but you see that for k equal to one, this doesn't quite make sense because the level of the SU two uh, piece becomes negative, and then it's uh, not very clear how to uh, uh, what kind of a theory you want to uh, to define that. Though perhaps there are uh, there is a way of making it. Uh, um, work, but we sidestepped that problem uh, by looking at instead um, uh, for a, a hybrid uh, version, so-called hybrid formalism, uh, and this uh, is a formalism, a, a broader formalism uh, that was developed by Berkowitz, which uh, uh, sort of has for a part of the space-time it makes the supersymmetry manifest. Uh, 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 and therefore in some kind of green schwartz like formalism, whereas a part of the uh, uh, space-time background is treated in an NSR-like formalism. Uh, and uh, so uh, Berkowitz, Waffa, Witten, uh, they, uh, um, they actually studied this in uh, more than 20 years ago, uh, and uh, they, uh, they proposed a hybrid formalism, which is uh, to describe um, such a background, which for the case of uh, their uh, formalism encompassed even the case of Ramon Ramon flux, uh, which we won't need. But in the case of the pure NSNS flux, the answer is very simple. Um, uh, so this is really a uh, based again on a sigma model, but now based on this super group ESU 1 comma 1 slash 2, uh, more generally at level K, uh, in the, the analogous case over here uh, would be K, but here we will be uh, looking at K equal to 1. Uh, so uh, that's uh, the uh, uh, description uh, for the ADS3 times S3 pieces. So. Uh, so this is what captures this part, the PSU 1 comma 1 slash 2 is really the supergroup corresponding to the Fermi uh, supersymmetric ADS 3 times S3, the bosonic pieces, SU 1 comma 1 is essentially SL2R and the SU 2 is the S3. Uh, so uh, there's uh, this times, uh, the, oops, uh, uh, times a T4, but which is now actually topologically twisted. But Anyway, that will not play much of a role in what we have to say. But uh, so the, this is this part is more in a conventional NSR-like description. It just happens to have a topological twist, which uh, uh, makes things a little simpler. But uh, okay, so that's uh, the formalism, which uh, is well defined for k equal to one because this is uh, this supergroup at level one is a well-defined. Uh, uh, well-defined uh, CFT, and um, we can uh, uh, work with that. So that's uh, the uh, basic uh, uh, setting. Um, um, I wanted to say that this uh, this was proposed by um, uh, sort of uh, by Matthias uh, Gabardiel and myself, and then made more precise using the uh, hybrid formalism. Um, uh, with uh, Lawrence Eberhardt in the, um, in 2018, uh, and so you can find many of the details in that 2018 paper. Um, so, but I want to say a few things that will be important for us. I will not go too much into the detail of this particular model uh, right now, uh, but I wanted to say. Um, uh, uh, some things which are special about this uh, theory. So the PSU one comma one slash two at level one is special, uh, somewhat like uh, SU two level one, uh, uh, which uh, you, many of you probably know uh, is also special. Okay. By the way, did my screen change or not? Uh, no, no. Now it didn't. Uh, it, it didn't show any change uh, since. Uh, but I don't know. It somehow after a little while it freezes. So, oh. uh, and this is. The, let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, and then we can see the cursor moving. I see. Yeah, but that, let me. Um, 
uh, sorry about this. Uh, I'm not sure why this happens. Maybe it just goes into some sleep mode. There's a timeout in your, uh, does it go to sleep, your screen? Um, well, not my, um, my, uh, my iPad screen didn't go to sleep. Uh, 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 so I'm not sure what uh, really happened, uh, but... Uh, yeah, I think the screen mirroring maybe stops functioning periodically or something. Yeah, like maybe I have to keep refreshing that. Uh, yeah, anyway, the best thing is probably to, uh, uh, to keep writing or something. I'm not sure. Uh, this would be a little pain. Yeah, yeah, yes, indeed. That would be one solution. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not sure even that, uh, yeah, maybe that will work, let's see. Um, so, so the PSU 1 comma 1 slash 2 level 1 theory is special because it has fewer representations. Uh, uh, so you might be all familiar in SU2, um, SU2 level 1 has essentially only one non-trivial primary. Uh, so uh, this is a bit like that, uh, in fact, it does contain an SU2 level one in it, um, as you can see. But what is important is that uh, because of this uh, um, truncation of the representations, um, uh, so uh, in terms of the uh, uh, SL2R representations, so the SL2R, uh, uh, which sits inside this PSU 1 comma 1 slash 2, um, uh, in terms of these representations, um, there's only uh, the uh, continuous representation. So the SL2R representations in general, you have um, in this continuous family, uh, um, uh, there's only the continuous uh, representation which is labeled by uh, the uh, by the j quantum number which uh, so uh, recall that uh, uh, usually something like j into j minus one minus of j into j minus one is the second casimir that uh, labels the representations and the continuous representations are the ones with uh, 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 with j equal to half plus i times a real number uh, typically p can be chosen to be greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. But in this particular case, uh, um, uh, this p is actually zero. So there's only the continuous representation with j equal to half. Uh, the non-zero p's are absent. So, uh, so in fact, there's a multiplet. There's a sh uh, so uh, so the so there's a sharp multiplet. Uh, which contains this j equal to half uh, and with an SU2 quantum number, which is a sort of a doublet, and then its partners, which are essentially there is a sort of a j equal to zero and a singlet and another one which has j equal to one and also a singlet. So these are all part of one multiplet, a short multiplet of, uh, so, th so there's a short multiplet of this PSU one comma one slash two. So uh, uh, level one. So it, this is the uh, truncation that happens, uh, which, um, uh, which is uh, special to uh, PSU one comma one slash two at level one. And uh, uh, so, uh, the um, this is very important because this means that these continuous representations uh, we have um, we have only the so-called bottom of the continuum. So if you uh, those of you who know this or uh, um, for those who don't, uh, the uh, the uh, ADS three string theory for general K uh, had continuous representations with arbitrary p, and these corresponded to what are called long strings. So, uh, so if you wish, uh, this is a picture over here of a string which is sort of wound some number of times. Uh, and if the ADS3, this is the picture of ADS3 as a uh, solid cylinder, uh, then uh, uh, these, uh, this is a sort of a picture of uh, 
uh, string with roughly speaking a in a winding number or more accurately what's called spectral flow uh, sector of two. And these were these long strings and they had a radial momentum. Uh, so they had a radial momentum. That's what this is sort of showing that these uh, strings can sort of uh, uh, oscillate. Uh, and, um, uh, and that's what the P the P was essentially labeling this radial quantum number. Uh, and um, uh, so, so what this means is that uh, here we don't have any radial oscillations. In fact, in some sense, the strings, as I will mention later, are sort of stuck at the boundary of the ADS3. Uh, but they carry, um, so, so no, oops. Um, so no, um, uh, sort of long strings with non-zero radial momentum, uh, which was this P. Uh, so no long strings like that, but um, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, but there are these spectrally flowed sectors. Uh, this was the kind of winding that I showed uh, in the last um, uh, transparency. <laughs> so there are spectrally flowed versions of this primary uh, or this multiplet that I showed over here. Now spectral flow, so this W is an integer which is again uh, can be taken to be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, the spectral flow, let me kind of uh, open a small bracket uh, here. Spectral flow is uh, something which is uh, an automorphism of the SL2R algebra in which I can define spectrally flowed current modes, which are given in terms of the original one uh, as follows. And you can define these for any K uh, the level K, uh, and they go something like this, and uh, so uh, for the, uh, they kind of shift the modes uh, a bit, um, uh, and um, uh, they change the J3, uh, shift the J3 a little, but kind of slide the modes of J plus and minus. Um, and you now consider, you can consider primaries with respect to these spectrally flowed uh, generators, which are the ones on the left-hand side. These you can consider primaries with respect to, the, uh, this is an automorphism of the SL2R current algebra. Uh, so you can uh, consider spec uh, primaries with respect to these which will be kind of shifted versions of the primaries, the original primaries. Uh, so Maldasena and Oguri in their classic work uh, on the theory with NSNS flux, uh, the ADS three string theory with NSNS flux showed that you need to include these uh, spectrally flowed sectors uh, to get a complete string spectrum. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, here too, we will have these uh, uh, spectrally flowed sectors uh, as well. Uh, okay, so Rajesh, one, uh, uh, yeah. can I ask? Uh, sure. uh, so this this is the consistent truncation of the uh, of the string theory that you're describing here by leaving no, no, out the uh, long it, strings. Uh, it is it is the string theory. Well, I I, uh, the, I'm, I just told you some facts about the PSU 1 comma 1 slash 2 theory uh, at level 1. Uh, so this was a statement about what I said in the last transparency here were statements about the um, uh, about the level 1 CFT. Uh, but what I wanted to, uh, what I was just going to say is that um, uh, there are no other physical states in the string theory uh, for uh, uh, when you are at level one. So there are the statement that there are no long strings is a statement that it's just ruled out. You, you cannot have them. The, the Sigma model doesn't even allow you to have these states. So it's not a truncation. It's just that uh, this is the, the physical spectrum itself is, is a much smaller 
physical spectrum at level one. It's a bit like, again, SU2 level one. Like I said, uh, uh, normally you think of SU2 as some uh, big sphere at level, uh, when it's at level K, big three sphere. But level one, actually, the central charge is very small. It's more like a free boson uh, um, or, or, or complex fermions or one complex fermion. Uh, so, um, so in some sense, there's a truncation. So it's a bit like that over here as well. Uh, so because it's highly stringy sigma model, it, it has um, much fewer states than the, but this will be actually a key to the uh, fact that uh, this theory uh, is in some sense easier to handle, uh, etc. cetera. So, um, uh, so in fact, the full, so uh, actually, uh, act yeah. probably a stupid question. Is it correct to say then that uh, when I take k equals to one limit, the string theory loses many degrees of freedom? Yeah, this. yeah, that is correct to say. In fact, it quite dramatically reduces its degrees of freedom. Uh, of course, k is not a continuous parameter in the string theory. It's a discrete parameter, so you cannot continuously go from, uh, so k equal to one and then it's k equal to two. But in k equal to two onwards, there are many more. Uh, there are many more degrees of freedom, and one way to see that is again to see the fact that uh, here we had uh, uh, we had this SU two at level k minus two, uh, and for k equal to two and more, you you the SU two does play a role, but for k less than two, in some sense, this contributes negative degrees of freedom, which kind of cancels out. Uh, uh, um, so uh, part of it acts like ghost degrees of freedom. And so there are actually only four physical transverse bosonic oscillators in, the, in this theory, as opposed to eight that you would normally have had for a 10 dimensional string theory. Thanks. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so in fact, the full spectrum, uh, uh, which uh, obeying the Verasoro conditions, um, uh, you can actually work it out, um, and this is what we did in our 2018 paper. And uh, so the full spectrum uh, uh, can can be worked out. Uh, I'm not writing the expression. You can write down a sort of a generating function or a partition function for the single particle states of the string theory. And the remarkable thing is that this. Uh, essentially, um, as the, that this is equal and is identical uh, uh, to the spectrum of the so-called single cycle, which uh, single mm, single cycle. Let me I'll just explain, or which is essentially single trace. Uh, 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 operators in the symmetric orbifold. So, uh, so the single cycle refers to the fact that uh, 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 as n goes to infinity, I should say. So you can work out in the symmetric orbifold CFT as well what the uh, uh, spectrum is at large n. Uh, uh, in fact, it's a free theory. The orbifold CFT is essentially a free theory. Uh, this one that I uh, uh, wrote here, mm, and this T4 to the n, because T4 is a free theory of four free bosons and fermions. And this is taking n copies of that and just orbifolding. So it's essentially a free theory um, but uh, uh, there's an untwisted sector, uh, which is the things that are invariant under the SN. And then there are the twisted sectors, which are labeled by various conjugacy classes uh, of this permutation group SN on N elements. Um, but uh, uh, there's a very important class, a conjugacy class of elements of SN that uh, will be important. Those are the ones which act as a single uh, which have a single cycle 
in the language of permutations, uh, you can classify the conjugacy classes by, uh, by breaking up the permutation into just non-trivial cycles. When the only non-trivial cycle is a cycle of some length W, we'll call it a W twisted sector, a W cycle, a single cycle of length W. We'll call that a W twisted sector. Uh, and so the single trace operators uh, in this theory are essentially the sum of all these uh, 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 all these sectors, the, uh, the untwisted sector plus the sector with W equal to one, uh, w, w equal to one is the untwisted sector and then the sectors with W equal to two, three, four, and so on, which are all the twisted sectors. So uh, you can write down the spectrum of this uh, also very explicitly as N goes to infinity and you can check this equality very directly. And I must emphasize that this is an equality of not just in the any BPS sector. It's a, it's a equality of the full theory. So it's of the full spectrum. So in a sense, it's probably the first example of a non-trivial string theory where you can see the full spectrum match with that of a dual CFT. Uh, so, but this is not the topic of this um, uh, talk. Uh, this is something that, um, as I said, uh, was uh, in our paper of 2018, and I talked a little about it in the ISM meeting, I think, um, in 2000, uh, when was it, 2018 ISM? Yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, can I just uh, ask a very small? Sure. Question? Yeah. Just so do I understand right that if I move away from the intense to infinity limit, there is no statement of duality. Is that right? Or uh, uh, no, there, there is. I mean, you can. Um, uh, the, it would be a perturbative duality. I mean, so if you're in the large n limit, you can actually uh, look at order by order in uh, uh, in uh, one over n. Uh, like I said, there's a. Uh, uh, this is sort of the dictionary. So, uh, so order by order in one over n, uh, the string theory is well defined because it's a perturbative string theory. Right. You have to compute higher genus uh, quantities, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, on this side also you can make an expansion in one over n, uh, and uh, the exact answer. And I will actually tell you later. Uh, uh, so when we, of course, compare the spectrum, we, we are talking about the leading uh, piece and that because when you go to higher orders in one over n, there will be mixing and all that sort of uh, this thing. But uh, so when I talked about the matching of the spectrum, that's a genus zero. Uh, but uh, when we uh, will talk about correlators, actually the, um, the uh, 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 what I, though I will mostly talk about genus zero in this, talk, it can be actually generalized to higher genus. And this was done in a paper earlier this year by Lawrence Eberhardt. Um, many of the things will actually go uh, to higher genus. But if you talk of finite n beyond a 1 over n expansion, of course, you, the symmetric orbifold CFT is well defined. But there's no, um, uh, but we don't have a uh, corresponding definition of the string theory and non perturbative definition of the string theory to compare uh, with anything. And so that is an interesting question. Yeah. I see. I see. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So, um, so the, uh, so what I just do and will need for uh, this thing is one of the things in this matching of the spectrum is that uh, the um, mm -hmm, W twisted sector uh, of the uh, orbifold CFT and so uh, so I just made a um, bold statement here about uh, the equality of the spectrum but you can you can refine it in many ways and one of the important refinements is that you can actually match even more in a detailed way the the w twisted sector of the orbifold cft matches with the w spectrally flowed 
uh, sector of the string theory. So as I said, uh, the string theory on ADS3 with NS, NS flux requires these, uh, uh, these spectrally flowed sectors uh, and, uh, and they are labeled by an integer W, uh, positive uh, integer W. And um, uh, the, this W turns out to be the same W as that of the uh, uh, W twisted sectors of the order form CFT. So the, this W and this W are to be identified in matching the spectrum. So, uh, so in particular, um, you can write a dictionary between uh, oops. can write a dictionary between an operator in the dual CFT, uh, which I will, uh, uh, in this W twist, uh, twisted sector, which I'll denote by W, uh, I mean OW, and I'll also label it, that it can have additional labels, but um, I will uh, label it by the conformals. This is the space-time conformal dimension. not to be confused with the world sheet conformal dimension. Uh, so the statement is that this uh, corresponds to a, a vertex operator now here in the W spectrally flowed sector and in which the space-time conformal dimension, which is will be a, uh, a quantum number on the world sheet uh, of the, basically of the SL2R, the J3, uh, zero um, of space time um, and uh, 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 that's uh, this quantum number but there'll be a vertex operator which will depend on this position x but it's a vertex operator on the world sheet so so this will be the uh, uh, um, this will be a coordinate x and x bar are coordinates on the space time uh, uh, CFT, which we'll take to be a sphere. Uh, this is the boundary of ADS3. This is a world sheet uh, coordinate. Z and Z bar will be world sheet. Rajesh, I'm afraid that your screen is again not mirroring, maybe. Uh, I think I wrote world sheet, but it somehow seems to have. Uh, mm. Hello. Hello. I think your screen has stopped mirroring again. Uh, okay. Uh, this is a bit. This is really a pain. I have to figure out uh, how to do this. Uh, uh, I thought I was uh, doing a. Mm -hmm. I thought I was... Uh, this problem was solved, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I was right. I thought uh, sufficiently fast that uh, uh, this was the thing. Oh, there's some, maybe it's a problem with the internet connection. Maybe that's why I'm right now the screen mirroring. Oops, that's wrong. It's somehow not... Uh, Oh, okay. Uh, I think I understand the problem. It's my, just uh, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Take your uh, time. Yeah, one second.
Hello. Hello, you're back. And yeah. now we can see the writing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see how it uh, goes. Uh, mm, it's a little bit uh, unfortunate that it uh, is doing this. I, I think there's a problem probably with my Wi Fi. Uh, the network that I was on uh, seems to have uh, mm, gone. Uh, anyhow, uh, let me um, mm, this thing. Oh, I think I switched off my video. Okay. Uh, mm, uh, uh, so let's uh, let's see. Um, uh, so this, uh, uh, as I was writing, uh, this is the world sheet, uh, uh, um, which will be um, uh, also we'll take as a sphere. Uh, uh, mm, so that's the uh, uh, that will be the genus zero contribution uh, to the string theory, uh, which is what we'll mostly uh, talk about. And uh, I will for them. Uh, I will at times talk about the more uh, general case, but uh, I will often restrict myself to uh, cases where the ground state, uh, to the ground state of the W twisted sector, where which uh, whose conformal dimension I will denote by H naught, and uh, which will have this form. Uh, and w square minus one by four w. And uh, so in the w twisted sector, this is the lowest state with lowest conformal dimension. And then there'll be um, higher uh, uh, operators. So um, so that's the uh, um, uh, this thing. Uh, so I'm very much, I think, uh, behind time. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see how it goes. Um, so uh, so let me uh, now, uh, so this was the setting of the duality, but now let me say a little bit about, uh, go to the second topic, which is about these uh, orbifold correlators. Uh, so, uh, so that was the setting essentially, but uh, now uh, let me... Uh, uh, start getting into the uh, the main topic. Um, so, um, so what we will uh, want to do is to relate arbitrary endpoint functions. Uh, so, relate uh, uh, endpoint functions of uh, function correlators uh, on the symmetric orbifold. In the space-time safety two to the physical correlators, endpoint physical correlators uh, of the ADS three. So that's what uh, we we'll do. But so let me start with one side, the space-time CFT. So what we really uh, will uh, restrict to. Uh, This O W of H, uh, I'll actually restrict to just the. Uh, I'll just denote it by a different symbol. So sigma W, which is so this is what is the usual symbol for the twisted sector ground state. In some sense, you can think of this like in ordinary. Bosonic string theory. When you learn, you uh, you you start by looking at tachyon correlators. So this is roughly speaking uh, the simplest set of correlators you might consider. I mean the the states dual to this twisted sector ground state, and W, if you wish, can be thought of as a discrete version of this momentum. So we want to actually compute something like sigma W one H one X one. Uh, so these will be the H1 not, uh, th this will have this ground state uh, uh, um, conformal dimension that I mentioned earlier. So, and we will uh, want to compute these on the uh, sphere. Uh, so, well, we don't actually want to compute. Uh, in fact, what I will try to show is, is that without computing these things, we'll be able to tautologize the ADS CFT by relating uh, these to the physical correlators on um, relating these correlators uh, to the correlators on ADS3. 
So we will, we will do that without uh, actually computing, but there's a broad general method of computation which will be important, uh, um, uh, which uh, is due to Lunin and Mathur, which I will uh, now try to recap. Uh, so, um, uh, so this is something perhaps many of you are familiar with in other contexts, like in the replica trick and so on. So there's this uh, Lunin Mathur observation uh, uh, so what they observe that uh, can compute uh, this correlator by uh, going to a covering space and so uh, why a covering space this is a trick that you can use when, as long as you have a symmetric orbifold, because what is a symmetric orbifold? Uh, like I said earlier, the, um, uh, it, it is one uh, where you have, uh, so, uh, so these are, uh, so the, so recall the symmetric orbifold was uh, T4 to the N mod SN. Uh, and so you have n copies of this T4, and they are permuted uh, uh, with each other. So what uh, what uh, what does a W twisted uh, or a W cycle permutation inside the SN uh, do? So what it does is that uh, uh, so supposing you are in the vicinity of uh, one of these points, uh, like this x uh, x1 then uh, the uh, um, uh, so in the vicinity uh, of uh, mm, uh, uh, w twisted uh, mm, um, uh, this uh, twisted sector uh, field um, mm, uh, so the w twisted operator the uh, fields of the T4, the, the T4 fields are permuted by a W cycle permutation, which is inside the symmetric uh, product. That's what, in a sense, uh, the, uh, 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 the definition of a twisted sector is that the fields, when you go around, are kind of uh, Twisted by this permutation inside SN, so uh, so uh, so this actually means that you can go to a covering space. Uh, so the so uh, mm, so you can go to a covering space, which I've tried to denote over uh, and depict over here. So supposing you had some correlators here at x one and x two, uh, uh, you 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 can lift to a covering space. In which, uh, let's say, this there was a z two w. Uh, th th this was this has w equal to two. So as you go around and you go in this covering space, you go around twice. You come back to the same point, uh, and um, uh, this one is another w uh, thing, which perhaps permutes two other. Uh, 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 copies of the T4. And uh, in general, you will have many of these and there will be many other branch points of different orders and so on. And the whole thing uh, you, uh, forms a kind of a covering space, which we'll even see is actually something that will be identified with the world sheet. But at the moment, um, the lunin mathur construction was purely a geometric one, like in the replica trick of lifting things to this covering space and doing the computation here, which is much easier because now the fields are sort of single valued on this covering space, uh, except that it might be a multi-sheeted cover and therefore in general of uh, um, generally will have a more complicated, uh, uh, there'll be a complicated covering map corresponding to a branch cover uh, uh, like this. So, um, uh, but um, uh, the nice thing is, so, uh, uh, so the, in the, uh, so the, uh, so locally, there is a branched cover. Uh, uh, so 
so that x is something like z to the w near a w cycle uh, uh, twisted uh, sector mm, uh, you'll you'll have w copies so that's a w sheeted cover uh, and um, you have uh, you take the union of all these sheets and that's what gives the global covering space and uh, these uh, the the union of these sheets And so, yeah, uh, is the, oops, is the covering space. Yeah, and uh, in general, it could be of uh, uh, many, you could have uh, different genus covering spaces, um, but um, uh, we, uh, at large N, and this is a fact about the symmetric product correlators. At large n, only the genus zero covering space dominates. It's a bit the analog of what you have uh, in uh, large n in uh, in uh, 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 large n gauge theories at uh, uh, only the genus zero uh, um, planar diagrams contribute, and this is somewhat similar uh, uh, to that. So what yeah. Lumen and Mather showed was that you uh, you can um, this trick uh, allows you to sort of uh, uh, lift it to this covering space, and in particular, so this is true for any operator, any correlator in the uh, uh, symmetric orbifold, but in particular for uh, sigma uh, for the ground state, the lift is to the vacuum because the uh, ground state insertion is nothing but putting some uh, uh, putting an insertion uh, uh, where only the fields get permuted, but there's no no excitation there. So in the covering space. It's really like inserting the identity operator or vacuum. Uh, um, so, uh, the, um, so, uh, so, Rajesh, uh, a kind of stupid question, maybe. Uh, so, uh, you said that uh, the covering space uh, only genus zero will dominate in large n limit, yes. but this n has to do with uh, more of this uh, toothed expansion, right? And here, the, uh, how this. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's not obvious what I said, but if you look at this theory, and if you um, if you try to compute a correlator like this, uh, you'll see that at large n, uh, because these operators you have to define them in a suitable way, a sum over. It's like when you take a trace, you have to sum over all the copies and then uh, conjugate it and so on. Uh, and uh, when you do the sort of uh, evaluation, you can combinatorially see how many different, uh, uh, different, uh, uh, what, which are the contributions that will dominate. And you, you can actually argue, and this was uh, probably most uh, uh, cleanly done in the work of Parkman, Rastelli, and Razamath, uh, that uh, they showed that you uh, the combinatorially you can show that the factors of n that come in when you compute correlators uh, like this uh, there's a large n counting somewhat like Toft's counting uh, which tells you that uh, the uh, corresponding covering space is uh, is genus zero. Yeah, it, it's not uh, completely obvious from what I have said, but it's something that's uh, uh, it's known to be true. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, uh, so the um, uh, so in particular, uh, if you are computing a correlator like this, the one that I wrote, which has only those ground state insertions, uh, then um, um, you just are lifting to this uh, covering space in which you just have the vacuum. So, uh, uh, and so you have uh, just a vacuum path integral on this covering space. Uh, now, uh, when you had, so 
So you have you can evaluate. Oops. Uh, so you, if you evaluate, uh, uh, so what Lunin and Mathur said is that instead of evaluating the uh, correlator here, you evaluate it here um, on this covering space. And uh, uh, and if you in particular are looking at uh, only the ground states, then in the covering space, um, all the information about the you know, twisting is there in these branch branch points and the branch covering. Um, and uh, but it's otherwise a vacuum path integral on uh, and with one copy of the torus, just a single T four because now all the different copies have just in this covering spaces as just one T four. Um, and you just have to evaluate the vacuum path integral on this uh, uh, covering space. And, uh, uh, and that is uh, quite, uh, 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 that is uh, uh, quite easy to, uh, to do, uh, at least in principle. Uh, so what you, uh, what you have is that uh, this thing, this sigma W1, H1, uh, this correlator uh, 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 this becomes uh, so it's just given by uh, a vacuum path integral so is, uh, let me just call it z vacuum uh, but that uh, is on the uh, vacuum path integral the target space T4 and so on, that doesn't know very anything about all these X1 to Xn. Where the dependence on X1 to Xn comes in is in the fact that now, uh, when in this, when you are lifting here, there's a conformal factor, which is uh, 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 the conformal factor, which is this gamma of Z. This is the, um, so here you have a map uh, X equal to gamma of Z. Um, a holomorphic map, and uh, um, and so when you lift over here, th this is uh, when you have a holomorphic map, you get a holomorphic anomaly uh, when you are uh, computing the, the conformal field theory path integral. There you get a holomorphic anomaly, and the holomorphic anomaly is just given by a Liouville type of expression for the conformal factor. Uh, 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 and the conformal factor is just e to the phi classical is just mod of del gamma square because uh, you recall um, d2x is equal to essentially del gamma square d2z. This is the pullback from the uh, uh, d2x is on the uh, bottom, but you pull it back to the top d2z, you get a conformal factor of uh, um, mod del gamma square. So that's what is over here. And this Liouville action is the usual one that you have uh, for the conformal anomaly. You get This is the world sheet curvature. It's the um, Liouville action, Liouville factor, the conformal anomaly factor. This action, of course, needs to be, uh, so this gamma has all the information about this branch cover because that's what uh, is there over here. Uh, all the information is in this branch covering, gamma of z, which I'll say uh, soon a little bit about. But, uh, uh, but in principle, the answer is essentially given by this, but this, uh, of course, uh, you need to uh, be regularized. It, you need to regularize it carefully. And Lunin and Mathur um, uh, uh, showed how, in simple cases, you can actually evaluate this. But this is a very general prescription which applies to any endpoint function, and uh, that's what uh, is the way in which you compute this. Uh, and uh, so. Uh, um, so, in fact, there are in general several, I mean, up to discrete choices, there will be, um, uh, 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 so this was uh, 
I should uh, probably have uh, said this is sort of approximate, uh, whatever. Uh, this is uh, this thing. More exactly, this uh, is equal to there's a sum over all the covering. And there are uh, different, like, up to uh, some finitely many choices, there will be different branch coverings, uh, and each of them will come with some uh, piece, which is like this new will piece that I wrote. And then there are some um, additional factors which involve this branch covering. Uh, to some power, this HI, this is actually uh, when HI is equal to that, when these are all ground state, this factor is not that. But in any case, uh, you get uh, a piece uh, which is something like this and the W gamma some factors which are expected to be some constants uh, which depend on the, uh, um, uh, which probably are even independent of the covering map uh, uh, W to get from evaluating this path integral semi-classically. So um, yeah, I wanted to say a little bit about the diagrammatic interpretation of this, but I, uh, maybe I, in the interest of time, I won't uh, really do that. I'll just show a picture, but there's a very nice uh, picture due to, again, Parkman, Rostelli, and Razama, uh, or in which you can uh, think of diagrams associated with each of these correlators or these branch covers. And uh, basically, supposing in this case, I've drawn a, a four-point function, a correlator, four-point function, uh, uh, what the claim is that you draw some kind of a closed curve which connects all these correlators, draw sort of an inner curve, which uh, uh, I've drawn with a solid line here, uh, which encloses infinity, the point infinity on the sphere, and uh, a dashed line outside, uh, which sort of encloses zero, if you wish, uh, in the complement, and then look at its pre-image under a branch cover. And now there are multiple, because it's a branch cover, there will be multiple pre-images. And so, I mean, uh, the branch points, there will be one image, but these lines, there will be multiple images. And that's what I have shown over here. Uh, so for instance, infinity will have three pre-images over here. These are the poles of gamma, because then essentially these are the points which map to infinity. So gamma is going to infinity. Uh, so these are the poles where the branch cover uh, um, uh, goes to infinity, uh, but there will be um, similarly uh, uh, each of these lines will have these pre-images and they form some kind of a double line graph, uh, but it's a kind of a graph, a double line graph, which is sort of a bifundamental like graph, where one dashed line and one, dot, uh, one solid line. So if you wish, it's, you can see these, uh, so there's a by fundamental graph here. In fact, it's interesting that this pointer naturally draws double lines, uh, but uh, uh, this uh, double line uh, graph, can, uh, so this is to be identified, it's on a sphere, so that's why this goes and comes here. Uh, um, so in any case, uh, you get a double line graph here, which is sort of the analog of the Feynman diagram. Uh, the Toft double line graph. And um, uh, the, the nice thing here is that to each branch cover, you get a different diagram. Uh, and there are, as I said, finitely many different branch covers. That's like the finitely many Feynman diagrams that you get by big contractions in a free field theory. This is the analog of that. So in, in some sense, there's a, a nice parallel and uh, uh, which I think, uh, will hopefully get fleshed out more. Okay, so let me uh, now uh, uh, go to the uh, world sheet CFT. Uh, so this was uh, about the space-time uh, CFT and uh, I, I will um, I will be quite quick over this world sheet part because that's the part maybe I will uh, discuss more uh, in the um, 
uh, in the uh, conference uh, uh, next month uh, based on uh, the recent paper, but I'll just try to give you a, uh, the general picture and anyway, I'm sort of, uh, I guess, Ayan, you told me I have one hour, 15 minutes, uh, is that right? Yes, yes, one hour, 15 minutes, but you can take more time because we had questions and also you had some nags, some technical <laughs> nags. So. Uh, yeah, so, so probably I should, uh, probably 10, uh, 10 to uh, 15 minutes, I should hopefully yeah, yeah, sure. uh, be able to get across most of the things. Um, so, um, the, uh, so, uh, so just to uh, say again, um, so we have, this is sort of the, um, uh, the, uh, so the endpoint function of the dual symmetric overfold has a sort of a form which is like this, uh, and it gets all its contributions from these branch covers, uh, which uh, correspond to this uh, uh, lift from the space time to some covering space. Uh, so now I want to connect that with uh, the picture from uh, the world sheet that you get from this PSU. So in the beginning of this talk, I started by talking about the world sheet theory, which was this PSU one comma one slash two theory, uh, and which had a special set of uh, sharp multiplets. Uh, um, and, I just, I just yeah, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, the uh, generally when you take uh, twisted sector OPEs in the, won't you get the untwisted sector states as well? In general, there will be, um, uh, there's a fusion rule. Yeah. So W1, uh, I allowed actually W here to be anything. Uh, so it actually turns out uh, in this particular case is that uh, um, the W equal to Z, uh, the, the untwisted is the W equal to one. So those will also come in, yeah. So there's some se um, there are some selection rules here, uh, and uh, in this correlator. So uh, uh, so uh, these W's uh, there there will be a rule in and W equal to one is allowed, yeah. So you fuse W one. I thought W equal to zero would be the untwisted. No 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 no. W equal to one is untwisted because a W cycle a cycle of length W. Oh, so cycle of length one is the untwisted sector. Yeah, uh, yeah. so there's no W equal to zero in yeah. any of this. And then the, that's reflected actually on the world sheet side also that, that, that there are no physical states in the spectrally unflowed sectors. For the, for the uh, case? For, for, uh, for K equal to one, yes. And that's right. So, um, uh, yeah, so, um, uh, so the so what we want to do, as I said, we have this uh, association between this uh, this correspondence between um, uh, these operators, and because of the matching of the spectrum, uh, we have this correspondence between uh, the operators in the symmetric product and the vertex operators in the uh, string theory. So that's what the matching of the spectrum tells you. And of course, if you couldn't match the spectrum, then there's no point in even asking the question of uh, matching correlators. It is uh, it's because the spectrum uh, matches that you can then go ahead and ask whether the corresponding correlators in the uh, dual string theory will reproduce uh, this. So what we want to, uh, what we want to consider are these uh, correlators of those uh, dual operators but now the vertex operators are labeled by positions uh, on the world sheet as well. Uh, uh, and we'll stick to the genus zero, the leading tree level correlators. And um, we want to try to uh, uh, look at what these are. And uh, now this is where uh, um, uh, the remarkable feature uh, comes in that uh, uh, that and uh, this is something maybe I will explain a little more when I give my talk next month. This feature of localization comes in, which uh, um, uh, so the statement is that this correlator is non-zero. Uh, only when uh, 
there exists a branched a holomorphic branch cover uh, x uh, um, equal to gamma of z um, such that each of the points zi, so i equal to one to n, are mapped to the xi. So when I write this vertex operator in general, when I write these vertex operators in general, x is some label in the space-time uh, sphere, and z is a label on the world sheet. They are a priori unrelated. They are independent uh, variables, and you, uh, you normally would specify it's like I'm choosing to work in the x space, it's, but it's like, you know, uh, in a, these are the analog of e to the i k dot x, um, uh, uh, x of z. Uh, so, so there's a world sheet coordinate z, but then there's the space time label, and x is from the world sheet point of view, just a space time, just an additional label like k, the momentum k for the tachyon vertex operators in flat space string theory. But the claim is that this correlator, this endpoint function, uh, is non-zero uh, only if there exists a holomorphic branch covering uh, uh, such that xi equal to gamma of zi. So what is this, uh, what kind of branch covering do we want? Uh, it's a, uh, so it's a branch covering such that uh, in the vicinity as z goes to zi, and uh, this x, uh, this gamma of z, or x uh, goes to xi, which is gamma of zi, but it has a branching behavior. Which is the wi, so it has a branching of order wi, so, so it has branching wi and zi. Uh, so that's what it means to have a a holomorphic branch covering uh, uh, with xi mapped to uh, zi mapped to xi. So in the vicinity, it looks like a w fold covering. Uh, mm, so a wi fold covering in the vicinity of each zi. So this is a very strong condition to impose, and that's what why branch covers are uh, not very. Uh, I mean, they are very rigid. Uh, so, uh, so it's a basic fact from uh, um, the theory of Riemann surfaces uh, that holomorphic uh, branch covers uh, with uh, the branching data. If I specify the branching data. Um, Uh, zi together with the wi. So if I say that around each, uh, around some zi, uh, there is a branching wi, if I specify these pieces of data uh, together with Rajesh? Yes. Uh, okay, it's back. Okay. <laughs> I thought the screen froze and suddenly it reappeared. It, it uh, okay. again, uh... Uh, yeah, maybe my internet connection is a little unstable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope my voice is uh, coming unbroken. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the voice reproduction is very good. No problem. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So, anyhow, what I wanted to say is that. Uh, branch covers are very rigid, so if you uh, if you sort of uh, um, uh, if you specify um, if you specify the points z i uh, and say that they have to have branching w i, and if you specify three points, for instance, you specify that um, uh, z I mean I can always by S L two C choose three of the z's uh, to be 0, 1, and infinity. And I, um, uh, I fix the, in the target that they are mapped to 0, 1, and infinity again, in this case, because we have a sphere uh, uh, as our target. Uh, so um, 
if I uh, specify that, um, uh, then essentially the branch covers, uh, if I specify this uh, data, then uh, gamma of Z uh, is essentially fixed. So when I say essentially, that I mean uh, there's up to some discrete choices. So there are some finitely many different gamma of Zs that can be there, but it essentially it is uh, essentially it is fixed. So in particular, gamma of Zi for I equal to for the remaining points for up to n, uh, this uh, are are fixed. So we don't have any freedom in choosing those. So when I said over here uh, that the correlator is non-zero uh, uh, unless xi is equal to gamma of zi, that's a very strong condition. Uh, so that's essentially, because if I normally had, uh, because if I am given all this branching data, I'm given all this branching data, the zi and the wi, uh, I can fix up to three points in the target space, but the remaining ones are essentially fixed. These gamma of ZIs are fixed. So the statement that these, uh, this correlator is non-zero means that actually it's non-zero unless my ZI, uh, unless this relation holds between the coordinates and between the two different labels in these vertex operators for all N. So in other words, Another way to say it is that, uh, remember these Zs over here, these are the world sheet coordinates, but um, uh, in the end, you will be actually integrating over these, uh, uh, over the space of, uh, modelized space of the n punctured sphere, let's say, for genus zero. So, um, so in particular, uh, what uh, this means is that the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, and so on this modelized space of the n punctured sphere, uh, genus zero n punctures, uh, the branch covers exist only on co dimension n minus three. Because these, because like I said, these n minus three uh, things are fixed. So this condition, if I uh, demand uh, such branch covers where I impose this xi equal to gamma of zi, they exist only on co-dimension n minus three. But the dimension of this modelized space m zero n is itself n minus three. So in other words, mm, uh, this uh, implies a discrete set of points. I said there are finitely many, so there are not just one point, but a discrete set of points on M0, N. So this correlator, so the bottom line in case you didn't uh, 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 completely uh, uh, this thing in case I went a bit too fast. Bottom line is that if I uh, uh, look at this correlator, it's non-zero except at a finite set of points on M0 and on this modelized space. So if I let my Zs be arbitrary, in general, the correlator will be zero. Only if my Zs are tuned, so my Xs, let's say I fix because I'm fixing my uh, my correlator here, this one is fixed. Uh, so I fix the X1 to Xn. So I fix that. Then this correlator is non-zero only if the Zs take some special values, uh, um, which, uh, uh, which are the ones that the covering map determines. Uh, so these values uh, that are fixed only if on those discrete set of points uh, on M0n will this correlator be non-zero. Okay, is that clear? That's sort of this, in a way, the central very. Uh, so, Rajesh, I, I have one more question. Yeah. The, uh, in the orbifold uh, 
um, expectation value the you one would expect that the central the selection rule is something like the sum of the twists adds to zero or something like that right it's not quite like that yeah i mean there's uh, you can have uh, it's no firstly they're all positive so they don't it doesn't quite add to zero i mean there is this riemann hurwitz relation and then there are selection rules i can talk to you separately it's a little for like for a three point function you have some inequalities that w1 it's a bit like an angular momentum but uh, w1 plus w2 must be less than or equal to w3 minus 1 or something like that uh, but on so, the other hand in the world sheet uh, side you are getting uh, selection rules on the z's which are continuous variables no no uh, so we also will have the selection rules on the w uh most of the depth but the, those will be those follow from the existence of the branch covering itself the same uh, the same the selection rules that uh, the is uh, that these correlators obey uh, uh, are nothing because of the lunen mathur argument you can actually say that this uh, the selection rules that these correlators obey are nothing but the selection rules needed for branch covers to exist uh Hmm. yeah uh, and uh, and here the interesting thing is that i mean when i did this computation there was nothing about branch coverings i didn't of course show you why how i argue for this statement so this is the crucial statement um, i didn't uh, sh show you that but uh, but the claim is that branch covers come very naturally if you try to compute this correlator in this ps2 1,1/2 theory and uh, and because the branch covers come in you have the selection all the selection rules that up and that come with the branch covering also come in over here so the w's here will obey the same selection rules because it's the same wi uh, the branching is given by the same wi that entered over here uh, and um, uh, uh, so but in addition to that what the z's are present only in these correlators they are not present over here here there were no z's uh, and so the what you're saying about these uh, continuous parameters uh, that's an additional thing that's present over here in zs but it will go away when we integrate over zs as i will just because in fact because uh, it localizes because it localizes yeah and the ais are not uh, branching data is it are not the data for the covers no ais are part of the branching data one once the branch cover is determined these ais will be uh, uh, fixed so no you don't have to specify you cannot specify them beforehand you so can only specify data sorry uh, branching data is only wi and zi this. they don't map into cft data that's what i was saying the ais are not part of the cft sorry of the of the orbifold cft they are not so, Uh, so they enter because ais are essentially this this del w uh, del wi gamma the wth derivative of gamma equal at zi uh, so uh, yeah so but they are all encoded in this uh, branching branch cover so uh, so uh, the branch cover essentially encodes all the data there's nothing and on both sides it's the same set of data yeah 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 right right yeah absolutely thanks Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but since it's getting late, maybe yeah. we can uh, conclude in two three minutes uh, so that we sure. can take a few questions up later also. Yeah. Uh, exactly, I think uh, this thing. Uh, so um, let me just uh, therefore. Uh, uh, um, so I, what I think um, the details of this uh, localization that I mentioned here, uh, I will describe um, in. Um, in my october talk um and uh, uh, there uh, what we will see the bottom line uh, is that uh, uh, this uh, so the bottom line will be that this um, uh, correlator uh, over here so if i take the physical correlator of this vertex operators so then the claim is that you get again sum over branch covers and actually you get in fact the same weight this lu will weight uh, and this semi classical piece 
uh, over there times delta function for the n minus three points, this delta function that I mentioned that essentially relates the, it basically it says that the pre-images of the Zs have to be uh, the uh, um, uh, pre-image of the Xis have to be these Zs. Uh, and, uh, and you have n minus three delta functions. So the delta two is there's a holomorphic and anti-holomorphic piece. So this is the statement that the correlator takes this particular form. The world sheet correlator takes this particular form. And now you can see what happens. So this, uh, uh, so this will imply that if I take the integral on the modelized space, which is what you do in the string theory, So the uh, physical correlator, the vertex operators, you essentially get this is equal to some, because this delta function goes away and you get uh, uh, and this, uh, I should have said here, the spike classical is what I said earlier. Uh, it's the same. Uh, the conformal factor associated with gamma. Uh, so, but I mean, you know, forget about these things. So this is um, essentially the same structure that we got for the symmetric orbifold correlator. So there's a sum over again, all branch covers, uh, the different branch covers that there are finitely many branch covers that you can have. So you see that this is essentially, so what we haven't done is to sort of show that these coefficients all come out exactly in the, uh, in the, in the same coefficients. What we could argue for was this delta function, this uh, and the species and these overall coefficients, which have to be fixed by the conformal bootstrap on the world sheet, uh, and, and that, uh, and, but these are constants independent of uh, anything else. Uh, these uh, constants presumably are the same as what I wrote here. You, you see, this is that's why I used a W tilde there and a W over here, but it's essentially of the same form as this. So. Um, so modulo that uh, uh, this thing, so you would say that this is essentially the so um, so that's uh, uh, essentially how the uh, um, uh, without computing either side, we are claiming that there's there's at least the, there's the structural equivalence uh, that uh, uh, this uh, uh, thing uh, that these correlators have. Uh, so uh, so you have uh, uh, this matching of the dictionaries of the ADS CFT. So maybe I will stop uh, given that I've gone quite a bit over time. Uh, and if there are some questions now, I'd be happy to take it. Yeah, Rajesh, thanks a lot for this wonderful pedagogical talk. It was uh, awesome. And the Chennai sky is also happy. It is clapping. It is thundering now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for Chennai. <laughs> uh, we okay. had a good shower here in the afternoon. Uh, now it stopped. <laughs> okay. Okay, we can take questions. Uh, any question? Uh, Rajesh, hmm. is there a, another duality of this variety with T4 replaced by K3? Yeah, so actually much of what I said uh, doesn't really use uh, K3 very oh. much, uh, uh, T4 or K3 very much. In fact, the Lunin-Mathur construction, everything goes through even for K3. 
Yeah, and much of what I had to say had to do with really the ADS three times S three piece. That's yeah. the, uh, the that's where all the nuts and bolts are really moving. And the T four is sort of going along as a spectator, and its whole, whole only job in life is to sort of once you lift it to the covering space, now you have a T four theory on the covering space, but you could equally well have had a K three theory on that covering space. But yeah, I didn't really use much about that and uh, things like even the spectrum and so on. Uh, I think the the whole thing just goes. So sorry, but, uh, 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 what about space time supersymmetry? It's the same, right? I mean, uh, I mean, meaning just uh, K3 with something else, which has less, uh, it breaks some more supersymmetries. But supersymmetry was not used anywhere, right? The yeah, only the not one comma one slash two, which keep, preserves some of the supersymmetry. But that's all you need, uh, that much supersymmetry. But the you one, wanted that ultra short multiplet, right? Yeah, yeah. That was to do with the PSU 1, 1 slash 2. So as long as you have an ADS 3 times S3 factor, yes. that PSU 1, 1 slash 2 describes the ADS 3 times S3. So then you can put something which is uh, breaks more supersymmetry than K3 also? I mean... Uh... No, you yes. need... Because it's a super group, right? So it's ADS 3 times S3 and then you have... Uh, the supersymmetric pieces of it. So you need a certain, I, I don't remember, eight supercharges or something like that to give the PSU 1, 1 slash. Oh, I see. I see. The PSU, okay, I see, I see. That PSU, because it, it is a uh, SU 1, 1 slash 2. So there are fermionic components as well. Uh, uh, no. So the thing is that uh, with T4, you should have 32 space, uh, sorry, 16 space time supersymmetries, right? Yeah, I always get confused with the number. Uh, yeah, depending on how, which uh, complex or real. Yeah, I yeah, guess so the green the Schwarz formalism. Right. Yeah, the thirty-two is what n equal to four super angles has. So this has this should have sixteen. Yes. So then uh, the green Schwarz supersymmetry, so the PSU one one two should be the so same. It preserves a part of it. Yeah, not everything. Oh, and it makes it manifest at least. Uh, you can write other generators also, but uh, but yeah, I think twice as many you can write the generators as the PSU. One, uh, but uh, you, yeah, you, you you don't preserve the full supersym. I mean, you don't make manifest the whole supersymmetry. But see. that's all that is enough. PSU one comma one slash two is enough for that short multiply. That oh. much supersymmetry is enough. So also in the F1 NS5 language, this K equal to one means that we have what? One NS5 brain or one? One NS5 brain, yeah. So that's why the theory of the one NS5 brain was always very kind of little bit, people kind of sidestepped it all the time. Uh, uh -huh. But I think what we have is essentially a picture at least of what would be called the, uh, I guess the Higgs branch of the mm -hmm. NS5 brain, the, uh, this thing. So, and I think it's consistent with everything that was known about the K equal to one theory from that, uh, but it, uh, yeah. So what really happens in K equal to one is that we have this very tiny ADS three times S three, which is so tiny, it is of string scale that it actually doesn't allow any string oscillators. oscillators right. uh, and uh, so only oscillators are essentially coming from the T four or the K three. Yeah, and uh, but it is a well-defined string theory. In fact, in some sense, it's quasi-topological string theory because the piece on ADS three times S three there's nothing uh, this thing. And in fact, this localization and everything. This is something we are currently doing with Matthias. Uh, uh, that uh, this I think follows from an underlying topological string description of the K equal to one theory. In fact, the last paper we wrote, uh, there, were, uh, there were hints of a twister-like formulation, uh, with, uh, which explains some of these things. There's a free field realization of the PSU 1, 1 slash 2 level 1 theory, which is sort of like a twistorial uh, description. Uh, so I'll speak about those things in the October talk. But, uh, but I think that underlying uh, topological string theory uh, is what is capturing the fact that there is essentially an almost trivial theory, but it is not quite trivial because it's dual to a very non-trivial uh, two-dimensional CFT, the symmetric orbifold CFT, which captures many things, as you know, even the Strominger buffer calculation uh, uh, captured by that. But, mm, yeah, but it's, uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, 
relation between uh, this level between attention less string theory, which is somewhat topological. And people had expected sort of the attentionless limit to be somewhat topological and, um, uh, and uh, the sort of free theory. And one of the things I'm thinking about actively is the lessons. Uh, I didn't have time, I would have otherwise. Some of the lessons for higher dimensional cases, right. yeah. which I think are now within reach. Oh, I see. That's nice. So can I ask one more question? Yeah, sure. So this ultra short multiplet, what does it mean in the gravity, uh, supergravity language? This particular no, uh, it's definitely no, there is yeah. no, it's not like a subsector or something. No, no, it's not a BPS state or anything like that. So you can't, uh, uh, I mean, you can't follow it to the gravity side. Yeah, I mean, the BPS states are there. Uh, those are uh, the BPS states which are there in the symmetric orbifold. Those are there, but they're not the um, ground states, there are some excitations on the T4. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, can I ask one question, Rajesh? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. On the CFT2 side, is there some way of uh, because <laughs> symmetric uh, SN orbifolds are kind of very nice and special. Is there some way of tracking the 1 over N correction, the next correction, just the next? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, because uh, you essentially get uh, from genus 1 contributions. And uh, all the things actually that I said, the statements uh, go through for higher genus as well. So there'll be branch covers, but except that they will be now, uh, um, the branch cover will be from, uh, uh, I mean, from here, when you lift, this will be a higher genus surface. So in particular, the leading contribution will be genus zero, but the subleading one will be with have genus ah, four. Okay. The screen is kind of uh, frozen. But that is on the world sheet side, right? But that's on the world sheet side. No, no, this is the Lunin Mathur thing I'm talking about. Ah, okay. Oh, but, okay. Okay. You're saying even on the CFT2 side, there will be a torus. Yeah, exactly. There will be contributions to the correlators, which are 1 over n suppressed. Uh, uh, and those are precisely given by the uh, by the Lunin Mathur. Uh, um, picture with the torus uh, as the covering space. So, okay, okay, great. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, so this thing can is now a genus one surface. And the same uh, things, there. so you have maps always from genus G covering space to the sphere. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, any further question? Okay, then if not, I have a question which may be related to your comment on higher dimensions. Uh, so here somehow the wall sheet doesn't see the radial direction, right? In this special limit and... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I actually didn't, I glossed over, I didn't uh, have time, but I can... Uh, uh, mm, yeah, uh, uh, so um, the world sheet actually, there is a uh, radial profile, uh, actually, yeah. So the, the, there's a radial profile. If I look at the uh, picture uh, of what this branch covering is, so it covers the sphere, but then there's a radial profile, this one. So it, it is, and in fact, this radial profile, I think I've written it here. Uh, I can write it down. Uh, this is actually the same thing, uh, the phi, which is sort of the radial direction, uh, has some piece, uh, which is a regulator piece. And then basically it is, uh, uh, I think it's with a factor of two, I think. Uh, uh, it's del gamma square. But there's this piece, uh, sorry, it's a factor of half. Uh, yeah, I think this is, has to do with the uh, conformal transformation on the boundary, right? This is uh, gives you a radial profile or it's related to this. Uh, yeah, sort of. Uh, essentially, uh, yeah, there's a, um, I mean, yeah, we got it by just solving the classical sigma model action. And in fact, this uh, phi is the radial direction so that uh, phi goes to infinity is the boundary. Uh, 
this epsilon is actually a regulator which is going to zero. Uh, and so uh, in the limit as epsilon goes to zero, this thing is essentially stuck at the boundary. But if you wish, uh, there's a correction piece which is very, it's very close to the boundary, but it's sort of fluctuating about that. And this is the uh, piece which is the fluctuation around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, essentially it doesn't feel the interior. So, yeah. uh, so the question is actually how, does it have some kind of interpretation from the CFT point of view because... Yeah, uh, so in a way it's sort of because it's like the deep UV, I mean, uh, well, deep, I don't know, the high, the, the whatever. Uh, yeah, it's the ultra UV. Uh, so, uh, uh, so that's why it's sort of stuck to the boundary. Uh, and that's because you're sort of at the ultraviolet fixed point, which is this uh, symmetric orbifold CFD. Now, of course, if you're perturbed away from it and so on, in many ways, you would sort of probably have more of a radial profile. But this is like in a free theory, I think the, you're effectively kind of at the boundary. Uh, I think this will be a feature of all the string duals to free theories. I see, but there is no direct interpretation of this radial direction, this phi field that you wrote down in the CFT2 language. In the CFT2 language, it comes out as that conformal factor that is there. And I see. Uh, yeah, so it's a, um, uh, yeah, because you are at the fixed point, so you get this. And now if you perturb away from the fixed point, I think this will take on a more of a life of its own. I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> Thanks <Yeah>. a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just uh, fit in with the sort of uh, scale and the same, that radial thing to the, to the limited extent that uh, you can interpret it in a conformal theory. in a free theory, yeah. Okay. So thanks Rajesh again for this effort. And it, it was really, uh, it was nice to have, have this sort of a talk uh, <laughs> here. So, uh, I got to learn how to give uh, such a talk, give this sort of uh, iPad-like talk, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> and thanks anyway, and look forward to- To the conference. <laughs> Uh, conference, all the best yeah. in putting together. Yeah, you have an impressive set of uh, uh, speakers and everything. This online thing has, I think, really helped in, in getting yes. uh, something like that put together. But anyway, I'm sure there's still a lot of work you have to do. <laughs> so, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, see you uh, sooner or later. And, uh, yeah. and, uh,